All right. Hello, everyone. Starting off a tiny bit late, but it's all good. We're here now. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Spice Trash. Uh, in the commentator booth with me, I have BJR. Uh, hello. A, a speedrunner is involved a little bit. Uh, as you can see, we have the Crooks versus Silver match. Uh, we have, uh, you know, two pretty cool runners. It's. It looks like there's a lot of... Uh, support for both runners i know at the beginning we had some heavy uh crooked spam uh, although i will say as we get into this maybe maybe cut back on the spam just a tiny bit uh, obviously you know a tiny bit of copy pasta is fine but dang a lot of you are going fast <laughs> it's a lot of the same post <laughs> but you know uh, as long as long as we can uh cause as long as we can cut it down a little bit just in case there's people who uh who, uh, you know, might have questions for the runners or, uh, just want to chat with others in chat while the event's going on. But, uh, yeah. Is this a rerun? Yes, this is actually, this is already recorded. Um, yeah. Every time, uh, I'm commentating, it's actually pre-recorded. Uh, by the way, uh, if you're unaware of this tournament, uh, this is a 116 RSG, uh, tournament for Minecraft. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's in partnership with the Urban Arts Partnership, and, uh, I assume we're gonna get started on this first run soon, so we'll probably talk about that partnership in the, uh, future, uh, after this first run, uh, once we set up for the next one. So, yeah. Now, we're just gonna fully see the runners get started now. Yeah, the yeah, countdown is exciting. happening there. Let's see if the countdown's happening on Restream. Yeah, it is. All right, three, two, one, and the runners are off. They have started. Very cool. Okay, let me pull up the chat again. Let me let me see chat. All right, hello everyone. Hi, welcome. And uh, yeah, so this is one sixteen RSG. Runners have to beat the dragon as quickly as possible. Uh, they're gonna get an ocean start. Bunch of iron uh, in this sh uh, shipwreck. We're actually gonna right off the bat see two pretty different uh, uh, strats. And we're gonna see uh, a little bit of front loading and a little bit of back loading. Uh, I'm gonna see Silver trying to get all this uh, iron and whatnot. Thankfully, didn't shift click on the uh, pickaxe or the bucket. And uh, we're gonna see uh, Crooks going for uh, front loading on wood as well as getting some dandelions. Hopefully, those dandelions will pay off. Yeah, with it being an ocean seed, the uh, food source, a bit more uncertain compared to other ones. Not going to be opting for a buried treasure. Going to check out this uh, food chest, and we'll get five bread pre never enter. so should have yeah, hopefully... Five bread, uh, five bread isn't a lot, but it is expected uh, for an ocean start. And uh, right off the bat, we're going to see both runners turning hitboxes on so that they can see... Uh, the kelp that has been uh, brought up from a little bit of a magma ravine. Yep, both runners having no issue locating the end to here and should be a pretty similar pace, especially considering there was some front loading on the side of Crooks, has more wood comparatively. Still managing to enter Never here with a very clean portal. Yeah, Crooks is, uh, Crooks went for uh, a, a slightly time saving setup of uh, pulling out the lava from underneath the magma block and then mining it at the same time. Uh, obviously, not the biggest time save, but it is pretty nice to see it. Uh, and we're going to see the same from Silver, actually. Very cool. Fastest entry in the wet, fastest entry everywhere, really. L little bit of little bit of misplay around the bucket also chose a slightly less optimal spot comparatively had to switch out one of the side blocks but about five mm. to ten seconds there uh, yeah, I will we'll say uh, behind we'll say it looks like uh Crux is going a little bit slower towards the bastion uh, and silver is actually gonna go straight for the fortress. Mm. I wonder if we're going to see any shields today. I don't know how, uh, these runners' opinions on shields, but, uh, you know, uh, when maybe we'll see, maybe we'll see some, uh, some shield play, some, 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 uh, safety and whatnot. Probably not, uh, just because a lot of the 
you know, dank runners really hate shields for some reason, but... You know, they have so much iron, it would be silly at this point for them not to, uh... Get a shield. And yeah, we're gonna see a shield from Silver, and we're gonna see Crooks going in for the Bastion first. Yeah, so this seed is in fact a bridge seed, gonna see Crooks entering there. But the decision making that was presented to the runners was they were given very easy, very fast access to the fortress. The, the Bastion was a bit further away, and it looks like we're gonna be seeing Fortress first coming out from Silver. Whereas we're going to be seeing Forced Bastion first coming out from Crooks. That will mean that likely the blade split will be faster as Crooks just yeets some gold off the edge. But yeah. we'll have to see if the additional fire res, uh, or maybe just the difference in rates. If, if, yeah, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking if anything, the biggest thing that would be a time save would be uh, getting the extra pearls, being able to cut out some of the distance traveled. Yeah, I mean, being able to, with this Bastion being a little bit further out, it does mean that Silver, I, if I recall correctly, the seed does have the capability for double travel. I believe that it has, a, yeah, a good amount of natural obby that you get from both sides of the chest, so Silver will be able to just double travel on spot, whereas Crooks will have to essentially travel twice as much distance to backtrack to where he needs to be. Yeah, uh, that's, that is accurate. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say, I don't know though. I mean, it really depends on how the overworld is, how the blind travel is going to be for them. Uh, I think both runners made good choices. It's just that they're very different choices. Literally the opposite choices, but... You know, it, 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 as long as travel doesn't matter too much, it should be fine. Well, I think a lot of what we're seeing coming out as the difference between runners as top level tournaments continue to progress and happen is that one of the biggest time differences is your blind slash your just never travel in general. Being able to land as close to the stronghold as possible and as accurately is a massive time difference that comes up between these runners and constantly decides matches because at the end of the day a lot of these mechanics are pretty similar but not everybody could do math honestly i felt that i genuinely will mess up even the simplest addition and subtraction uh, because my brain is the size of a pebble um but yeah so we're gonna see uh yeah, so now the runners are actually switching positions. Uh, it looks like uh, Crooks was able to get to the fortress much faster. Uh, and as I kind of thought, um, the pearl travel is going to be pretty huge. It's going to be a lot of uh, space to uh, catch up and whatnot. So I'm hoping that uh, hoping that uh, Crooks has, uh, or I'm hoping that uh, Silver has uh, some fast. Uh, uh, bastion routing, I suppose. And now, is that yeah. the same Bastion? I'm not sure. Yeah, it is. It is? Okay. Ooh, I, I tried to go for the boat clutch, but didn't quite hit it. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day now, I'll be interested to see what Crooks does from this spot. Does have only the 10 obby. I believe that a lot of the uh, residual obsidian was in the other side of the Bastion. So, we'll either be doing full blind or we'll be doing educated from his original portal. With the fact that he's doubling back to the fortress, that means his proximity is pretty nice to be able to yeah. do that. Yeah, well, given a bridge, I wasn't really expecting to not have 20 plus obsidian, but yeah, he only has 10, so that's, you know, that's surprising. Um, there was quite a bit of uh, natural obsidian, also Brentilda. A faster, uh, faster, a fast runner. The fastest, hopping. technically. The fastest. One according could to say. Leaderboards. According to the leaderboards, however, according to Hearts and Minds, I think we know who the real uh, uh, world record holder is, uh, and that is, of course, uh, Nerdy. But um, Frontilda, uh, on paper, is pretty fast. Uh, but uh, yeah. 
quite quite a slow chalice loot coming out here from Silver, dealing with a hoglin ahead of time, taking Ooh, a bit of a chunk yeah. from the crossbow piglins. Going to be making himself a funky hat and a pickaxe, and yeah, now oh, we'll we be love the hats. Reverting back into the actual trading section of the bastion. Be interested to see what route he goes for here. A lot of natural piglins spawning up there, but mm. ooh, roll zombie yeah, piglins. I think, yeah, I think which... Dowski is still a pretty good uh, choice here with all those dudes. Well, it that, those um, the placement of those zombie piglins definitely could have affected oh, some yeah. of the uh, retention that, that he gets here. Going to be coming into the overworld here for Crux. Going to be a, a wow. distance estimation coming out. Yeah, Crux is uh, looks like just going to go for uh, just regular uh, old triangulation. No uh, thirty FOV or any. Uh, you know, tactical stuff, but is outversed, so there is something to be said about uh, his speed. Yeah, we will see. I, I believe this is just a full blind into a cal in into a distance check, right? So he knows how far he has to go. I didn't quite catch the angles. Oh, okay. So he already. Oh, so he he didn't go back to his original portal. He made nope. a new one. Wow. Full, okay. Full blind, as we will see, Silver checking the other side of the bastion. Also, Crook's support coming in. Definitely yeah. going for the going for the high roll comparatively here. Blinding in a tournament is always a a, a risky check, and it's gone down. Oh. He absolutely <laughs> <laughs> completely... As you say that, it goes down. What a blind. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's really good. Um, yeah, digging down at 945. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. It's not, it's not bad at all. Um, and as you can see, even with their current PVs of, you know, 1207 and 14, about 1430, uh, they're, they're still getting in really fast. And I mean, like, even with a, even with a better seed, this would have been a easy sub 10. So uh, if the, if the, gold here. oh, interesting. Really um, trying to force the double, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I think usually, uh, runners will say that, um, or as some, most speedrunners would say, trying to go for the fortress first is usually a good play. And there's the portal, uh, so uh, that idea clearly doesn't matter uh, to Crooks, and uh, he's just gonna hop right into the end. Yeah, this, this is insane being... pathing by Crooks. I don't know how much. I mean, it's all skill. Everything is always a skill, uh, but like, geez, so fast. I mean. I the... Obviously, a runner that's capable of that hunger reset coming through for silver as he only has nine pearls. Oh, wow. I wonder I... if maybe he missed some, missed some trades. I I assume something's had to have gone wrong for him somewhere because obviously, maybe data. Pack? Oh yeah, there's Question a mark? there's a lot of missed we, trades there. We we know that he was having some issues with the data pack free match but oh. he should not be this low on pearls maybe maybe it's not a massive pearl uh what's called pearl trade set that's a perch already Cro wow Crooks is just is rolling the on? rng he's rolling this seed and he is yeah, going looks to be like yeah. taking the victory in under 12 minutes oh clean full bed as crooks is it sub 12 has... though Oh yeah, that's sub 12 easily. Wow. Okay. Um, well, there you go. Uh, we didn't really have enough time to talk about the seed at all. Uh, Crook's just finishing in uh, 11.40 on his timer. Uh, very cool. Jeez. And now we're going to see an exit from Silver. Now, I don't know about this tournament. I don't know if we just let the runners play it out, because they aren't in nope. the call. So I'm not it sure is. how we... Let's communicate uh, to the runners. Uh, Silver will know that there is no need for him to carry on, and we will okay. be getting into the second seed as quickly as possible. And that was just flat was out so a fast. clean run. That was a Crux. clean run. Obviously, um, the major RNG element there is the blind. The absolutely taking the uh. Bastion first is generally the safer, more comfortable route for a lot of. 116 runners but you just cannot guarantee hitting the blind and yeah. at the end of the day 
he managed to high roll gets maximum like 150 blocks was that like it was it was not far that he had to move and then very fast nav very fast perch just really high rolling <laughs> yeah um i wonder if maybe cuz i mean those pro drops were pretty low for silver uh maybe we just the triple check make sure he has the data pack yet well we'll um, be able to observe the world creation process here we can see that he currently is entering the data pack screen so it should hopefully shouldn't be an issue i mean yeah so that's going to be a one for crooks uh, regardless of the data pack, because uh, I don't think the data pack would have made it uh, that much of an influence, uh, really at all, since Crooks was in the end fight while uh, Silver was in the middle of trades. Oh yeah, it was it was definitely a uh, a definitive victory coming through from Crooks. Yeah, uh, a good a good starting, because this is both of their first matches. So you know, I I do uh, think it it also. It, it speaks to something about the tournament mindset versus the RSG mindset. A lot of the time, people will try to edit their tournament, their, their playstyle, for a tournament run to be able yeah. to make sure that they can consistently finish runs. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing in a tournament is being able to finish. But Prox just went for basically full RSG strats. Like, yeah. not taking anything for granted, front loading resources. Thank you. Thank you. Silver Sorry, I was just reading bridge Silver. Was clean. <laughs> but yeah, like, he, he ran full RSG and it ended up just working out really well for him. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, that was a good RSG seed. Um, I definitely went for the risk on going Bastion first and I. Easily paid off uh, using the pearls that he got to the fullest uh, extent. But uh, yeah, so while we're waiting for the next seed to get set up, uh, BJR, uh, do you want to talk about the uh, Urban Arts Partnership? Did you read up on uh, all that? Oh, of course I've read up about the wonderful yeah. sponsor. Let's oh, go, well, then give us some information about it while we wait. Because, uh, you know, they are sponsoring this. They're helping out with the prize pool. We should uh, we should tell all the wonderful people here about uh, about the uh, about the sponsor. Well, the Urban Arts Partnership program is a multi-year college prep program that teaches students both the arts and technology of video game development. Wonderful business to be getting into, as it continues to expand. And very awesome of our sponsors to be enabling more people to get into that field. Yeah, it's very cool, uh, especially helping uh, underprivileged kids, uh, you know, get the careers that they want uh, and the careers that they need. It's uh, very uh, a pag man, I suppose. And yeah, if you want some more information about that, uh, if you want to, if you yourself are a student that might want to get involved with that, or if you want to just help support them in any way, maybe volunteer or anything like that, uh, someone pulled up the, uh, the Explanation Point UAP a little bit earlier. You should check that out whenever you want. Yep, very awesome that they are put putting themselves out there as a part of this, and hopefully we can pay back to them and pay back to the wider community in general. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like both runners have their uh, stuff up, and the countdown is happening. They're going to be starting in 10 seconds. Uh, I and see a uh, desert temple. Yeah, we do see a desert temple. Uh, the timing in the world, the IGT is going to be a little bit weird since uh, uh, Silver started a bit early, but yeah. So well, right off the bat... Ultimately not pool. that meaningful as yeah. it is a RTA time tournament. Yeah, it's also 116, so, you know, sleeping doesn't matter as much. Uh, but yeah, so... Again, just right off the bat, two very different approaches. Uh, Crooks going... Straight for the temple, uh, and Silver wanted to stop a little bit for some wood. I was thinking maybe Silver would go for a pickaxe or something, but uh, no. Oh, they both did. Both did the that same. Scared, that TNT scared me for a second. I didn't think. I wasn't sure if that was intentional or not. Um, that's an interesting TNT placement. I don't. I feel like I don't usually see it like that, or at least whenever I run, I I put it up on the top. That's uh, 
Very interesting to put it on the side like that. Uh, it didn't actually blow up all of the chests and whatnot, uh, but uh, looks like it's fine. Three diamonds and seven iron in a temple. I mean, I feel like that's possible. That's that's certainly possible. Well, we literally watched them generate the seed. This is oh, this is a hundred percent. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. That is. It is possible because that is exactly what has happened. <laughs> possible because it happened. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to see a diamond pick and a diamond pick. Who would have thought? Um, hopefully we'll see some gold picks as well, uh, if they happen to get some extra gold. I mean, everyone should make gold picks, especially if you get, like, an abundance of gold. Just, uh, you know, go fast. Yeah, I mean, especially around top-level runners as well, they will be accustomed to kiting out the piglins and not being as reliant on gold armor as... Of a runner's crooks, oh. beautiful. Crooks just going for woodlight. Yeah, crooks might be going for woodlight. That'd be pretty fun. That'd be pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Gonna yeah, that's exactly over... what he's doing. Skip over Flint. I mean, there tile. are there are some sheep. So you know, if you wanted to make carpets, it certainly is an option. Thankfully, there are sheep nearby uh, because there wasn't any food in this seed at all. Besides that. I mean, I, I'm just really liking what I'm seeing from Crook so far this tournament. He is extremely decisive with the like with what he's doing. Like, doesn't want to waste any time looking for Flint, just gonna opt immediately for the wood lit, has it pre-planned how to build that portal, and will be able to enter first, despite the fact that there's a flint and steel on Silver's side. Nice yeah. old bastion spawn going to be immediately capable of going to loot this chest. Didn't quite catch what Bastion type it was, but uh, looks like. It Hopefully looks like it's, it's not bridge again. It's, it's bridge, bridge again. again. Wow. Yo, let's go. Can we get a? Can we get bridge count? Uh, someone, someone look back at the uh, yesterday's vod. Get a bridge count. All right, thank you. Um, but yeah, so we got bridge again. Well, bridge obviously is. It's just the most consistent see to be able to find and verify uh we can see the bath the, the fortress visible on silver's end as well uh obviously regardless of data pack most of the time you'll be able to get everything you need out of a bridge as crook's going for the high roll once like once again just absolutely staying consistent with his playstyle, leaving like half of the chalice and just gonna immediately try to see what he can get yeah, uh, I think, that, oh, that's a really interesting uh, Bastion setup that basically makes Dowski not possible. Oh, he is uh, a... So he's just going to go for just normal dig a hole and throw the gold in. Looks like it will work fine. Wow, that blaze has some problems with the piglins. I guess it makes sense because, whoa. Oh, okay. I remember this seed. This seed oh, is I hate so this. crack. I hate this. Uh, Why would folks? you just... That's uh, that's awful. Oh, this seems I mean, awesome. I love this scene. Uh, if you're if you're if you're ready for it, this is really really nice. But like, jeez, just put the put the spawner right on the trades. That's very interesting. Th this seed is absolutely insane. I I've helped out a lot with the seed testing for this tournament, and oh, okay. the, there's there's not too many that we're gonna get like this, but. When when you get like this, it's it's definitely fun to watch and to play. Yeah, I don't think this is a I don't, like this is obviously isn't a hard nether. Uh, both runners getting through it pretty easily, but like if you're not ready for it, if you come in with low health or like with not a lot of regen, uh, you can't. That's one. That's pre one nine. Uh, if you come in with you know not a lot of regen or health, you could die like in what four hits and then. You're in a bit of trouble. There is a... Okay, that's just uncalled for. That hoglin in the uh, uh, spawner. But hey, it, it will work out in uh, Crook's favor. Deciding to start swinging at the uh, blaze. I I don't know how I feel about that blaze bed with all that lava right there. That's a... Uh, yeah. Very, we, we did, very we dangerous. We get to witness a nice Pokemon battle there. Blaze versus hoglin. Turns yeah. out that the winner was the Pokemon trainer coming in and just beating the hell out of one of them. So, actually out of both of them, to be fair. Uh, Blazebird, I do kind of agree with the lava everywhere. Not a, uh, 
not not the greatest blaze bed, but it does open up the spawner. So yeah, I mean, if you have fire res, I guess it's fine, but it's just a little bit uh, annoying to deal with if that lava did happen to get into the uh, into the spawner. But yeah, this is uh, going to turn out to be a pretty fast run. Um, I'm not sure what the runners could do to make it even faster. Um, I mean, maybe getting the pig tr uh, piglin trades even closer to the spawner, uh, potentially. Uh, just so you can get more blaze spawns in as the uh, piglins are trading. Um, maybe, if you really want to go for it, maybe triangulate in between trades and all that. I don't know. If Crux, you really want to go fast. Crux just never punished here. Goes for half chalice, gets the one backup block, and immediately gets the rest of the pearls he was short on. Like, yeah. th this man is... <laughs> he should... He's, He's going fast. I, so... I uh, you know, like, I, I, like, I'll be honest, I, I'm not super familiar with them. And I don't know why, because, I mean, like, if that's how they play in tournaments, like, jeez. <laughs> I mean, clearly has a lot of supporters, but oh, I definitely. Think we, we will obviously these seeds are prepped to a certain extent. They're not planned for high rolling. They're planned for like, you know, there will not, you will not need more than what is provided. If that makes sense. Crix is gonna completely ignore the portal that's literally across from him and go for just making a brand new one, which. Looks like did make a brand new portal. It's very interesting. Um, is he gonna... doing? Oh, oh he's there's gonna, the thirty. He's access calculated. There we so go. So I have not a hundred percent watched every every moment of this tournament, but I believe this is the first instance of um, access calculated we're getting. Yes, yes, it is. I think we've talked about it uh, before. I know I was commentating with Sizzler, uh, and Sizzler was talking about it uh, because it didn't actually happen. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, if you can do it, might as well go for it. Just do a little bit of math. Um, I'm sure, uh, yeah, I actually don't quite remember uh, the uh, whole setup for Axis triangulation, but it seems like Crooks does, uh, and that is good enough for me. I, I know what it is, but I honestly don't think it would be interesting to discuss on the stream. <laughs> so, <laughs> it looks like... Is Silver... I think Silver's gonna do double travel, moving a bit further out, gonna do a basically completely random portal, I assume a basic distance check here, and then we'll just make a secondary portal depending on how far he needs to go. Yeah, and uh, yeah, BGR, I don't think you realize that the majority of the people in this chat are also oh, yeah. Eric did uh, do nerds it. that speedrun. You, uh, you, can, you can tell them about Axis travel, uh, BGR. I'm, I, well, that, that is a great segue for me to talk about the fact that there are multiple matches of t on today, <laughs> one of which is commentated by T-Wags. Everybody knows T-Wags, right? He's known for his intelligence and his math, and I'm sure oh, that so we're gonna. Happily... <laughs> okay, so we're going to push off the uh, explanation to T-Wags. We're going to make that <laughs> T-Wags' job. Cool. See, I I'm fine with that. I, I don't I... even know how to do it, so. I can't be called out on not knowing what I'm talking about if I put it on to someone else. <laughs> Honestly, that's that's valid. Yeah, uh, Twx is actually uh, the official Minecraft speedrunning uh, professor, uh, amongst other things. And Silver almost dying there. Uh, thankfully, did have a fire res in uh, the inventory. Yep, we're seeing the second portal coming through here from Crooks. If he's done it perfectly, should be within a hundred blocks. If not, yeah, that I'm was. Fine. In a cave here, not going to check around here, just going to opt to immediately go to surface. Yeah, that was a really risky uh, pearl throw by Silver. Literally on half a heart right now. Uh, a little scary. Um, hopefully he can get his... Uh... Oh, he's just going to blind right here. You he's, know what? That should work. This is, this is his secondary blind, so did do a, a rudimentary Ooh, distance ocean. check. And... Yeah, uh, uh, Silver just went for the normal... Uh... Uh, just regular uh, sort of calculated travel without any of the fancy stuff. Uh, and he is going to be out uh, at roughly the same time. Well, it looks like Ocean Exposed not going to be in Crook's favor here. 
Uh, Silver going to be doing another distance check upon arriving back, switching out for a water bucket on Crook's side, as looks like food source is going to start becoming a thing of discussion. Silver's health bar after the pearl travel. Not really making its way back up that quickly because of the rotten yeah. flesh. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, one of the biggest things that uh, Crooks did was go for the uh, uh, sheep killing. Uh, that basically gave him just a huge advantage with, uh, you know, extra food that uh, Silver isn't going to be able to get. And Silver is going to go for another hunger reset. We're going to see I Spy for Crooks, though, uh, going in at 11, uh, about 11.15. And uh, this uh, stronghold looks a bit uh, smellier than the last one, definitely. Uh, not going to be quite as easy for uh, Crooks to do. Yeah, I'm interested to see. I believe there are different strongholds. Crooks not at all showing fear for the uh, Yeah, Crooks just doesn't care. I mean, Crooks just like, I know I'm going to finish this. It really doesn't matter. I don't need to go through the stronghold. I'll just find a cave and just walk straight to the portal. Uh, that's honestly uh, the biggest Chad move I've seen uh, uh, out of this tournament so far. Just leaving the stronghold uh, to get to the portal room. Uh, you know, as one does. This, he is just playing extremely well. Obviously, a lot of fans, as we could tell from the pregame. But, like, this, he's definitely making a statement. He's not somebody I've seen around the tournament scene much before. Is he? There's no way. Okay, yeah. I thought he was getting an SSG perch there, and I was you know, almost SSG almost going to be angry Stan. at that. But definitely making a statement right now is Crooks, and gonna gonna be doubling up on his fan base. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, he definitely deserves it. Well, you know, Silver coming in, representing House Builder Gang, is their, uh, is their little pet pre-1-9 player, but dabbles in a little bit of 1-16. I, there, there was the Twitter thing where it's like, I, oh, they're all 1-16 players, and it's like, trust me, I have I have one black friend, and it's oh Silver. God. <laughs> oh, I don't like the way that was worded, but I get what you're saying, uh, so, well, go ahead, we're gonna... We're gonna see a dig down from uh, Silver now. That is uh, almost verbatim what Lewis Fulham said. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. Silver um, gonna be making his way down into the stronghold right now as Crook's gonna be going for no bow and arrow, just purely high roll perch strats. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna. Can we get some prages? I don't know if prage is here. If it is, can we get some for the uh, for the perch? Another awful stronghold. Yeah, completely different stronghold. So won't be expecting to see him dipping out into the wider part of it to locate. I mean, um, I hope he does because that would uh, be huge gamer energy. Ah, uh, prage isn't here. Uh, perch coming in for crooks. Five bear. Oh, here we go. That's good. It's good first. Good second. Not quite four. Oh wait, it is four bed. Wow, I didn't think that last one would hit uh, that much. Dang. Uh, so, you know, Crooks with an absolutely cracked first time and then a four bed to finish off the second match, meaning that Crooks is going to go ahead and sweep this two to, uh, two to zero. Yeah, eliminating Silver in just downright, like, cruel fashion. Yeah, like, I mean, that was that was fast. Uh, you know, they don't call it a speedrun for nothing. Yeah, and I think definitely of, of the runs we've seen, that's got to be one of the lowest combined times. Obviously, seeds are a factor, but... I mean, the, the first seed was that insane. first seed shouldn't have been that 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 quick though. So even with yeah. seeds in factor, that was this is really really good. Um, but uh, yeah, I see we have a lot of crooks uh, crooks enjoyers in the chat. But can we get can we get some O sevens for silver? Uh, as this is uh, a single elimination tournament, so silver is going to be uh, heading on out of the tournament. Unfortunately, we can't keep everyone. Uh, so yeah, can we can we get some uh, can we get some O sevens? I I hope so.
Well, looks like we're not. <laughs> Either that or we're getting a few. We're getting absolutely. a few. <laughs> There's a lot of. There's a lot of. And perfect lead in from chat for our next matchup. Gonna be. Yeah. Gonna be heading out after this match in roughly half an hour. Not sure how. Uh, not not sure how the timings are going to work out specifically, but. We'll definitely be heading into the next matchup, which will be Raul versus Draconic, commentated by T Wags and Babu. But for now, we have our runners in the booth with us, Crooks, GGM. Silver. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Hello. Commentated by T Wags and Babu. Yeah. And are we saying your name? But for right, now, Crooks? we have our runners uh, yeah. in the booth with okay, us. Okay, awesome. Crooks, I just Silver. I wanted, to, I wanted to make How's sure. How's it going? And also, hello, Silver. Sorry for talking over you. Uh, and are well, we saying your name? Yeah, right, hi. Crooks? Uh, okay. yeah. I mean, okay, awesome. It was a good match. I, just, I uh, wanted, wanted to make sure. Crooks went for, you know, some some uh, like more RSG and less tournament plays, and it and it kind of panned out, honestly. Um, you know, uh, for that first seed, uh, Crooks went for uh, Bastion first, uh, and Silver went for uh, the first visible structure, which was Fortress first. Um. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I think the Pearl Travel definitely helped. Obviously, uh, a pretty decent blind as well. Um, yeah, I was surprised that uh, even with all of the uh, Bridge Gold, you wouldn't be able to uh, double travel, but it really uh, didn't make that big of a deal for your blind, so it all worked out. Yeah, I got um, pretty lucky there. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, and then uh, Stronghold uh, just... Navigation for that first match was pretty good. Sorry, Silver, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I didn't even make it that strong. I just like, there's just some stuff uh, that I just don't know if it's faster or slower and I just need to work on with my gameplay. And I just like, I don't know. I felt like Fortress yeah. First on the first seed was like supposed to be like what I was supposed to do, but I guess not. I think, so I think I. Fortress First, <laughs> Fortress First is definitely the safer option. Um, just cause you're not sure how close the Bastion is. Uh, if using Pearls is actually going to be helpful and, and whatnot. So there's a lot of like, uh, RNG and randomness in going for uh, Bastion first, which uh, happened to work out in Crook's favor uh, this time. Uh, mm -hmm. But, I mean, you both played it well. I uh, both played it very differently, but both still played it very well. Yeah, um, I got stuck at the bridge. I don't really know what to do with Chalice Pigs, because, like, they were just constantly shooting me, so I just kept throwing gold at them, and then there was just one pearl trade, like, underneath a block, and I just didn't see it, so then I just didn't get pearls for the rest of the Bastion. No. Uh, That's so unlucky. I was just waiting there. Yeah, one of the uh, unfortunate uh, side effects of running with data packs, if you end up high-rolling one of the good trades on just a throwaway gold, then, unfortunately, that was intended and right. yeah it's, can, it's quite yeah. difficult to plan around that on the side of seed finders yeah yeah um but i mean overall i think you all played uh you both played uh the seed very well um and i mean that second seed uh again uh got really really close uh you both went to actually uh pretty different str or you both went to different strongholds i believe um, and I think both of you could, uh, did have the chance to, uh, double travel, uh, and, uh, Crooks, you went for the Axis travel, uh, while Silver went for just normal, uh, calculated. Uh, Silver, do you know, uh, Axis travel at all, or were you just going with yeah. what you knew at the I literally, moment? I know Axis travel, I literally just didn't have the sheet open, and I honestly didn't, I, I wasn't 100% clear if, like, I was all good with everybody, so I honestly, I just uh, did regular calculated, missed by, like, 500 blocks, it was so bad. Oh, um, but, I, mean, I yeah. You were, you were certainly pressured uh, to uh, go ahead and travel there with your health uh, and your uh, hunger and whatnot, so I, I still think that was still a good play. Um, uh, and again, I mean, like, you both played it really well. Uh, obviously, you're both good runners. Uh, you know, this is just an invitational tournament, uh, you know, uh, there's nothing to prove because you're both just two of the top runners, you know, but you're both wonderful, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, it was a good match. Yeah. I mean, like, I wish I put up more of a fight, but that's fine. No, I mean, it, it still got close. I think the, uh, the Stronghold Travel, uh, near the end of that second match just didn't happen to go in your favor, uh, unfortunately. Uh, 
and but uh yeah because crooks to just have an exit uh the stronghold and then get right back in straight to the portal room uh and you're just a tiny bit more scuffed uh than crooks mm -hmm. yeah that nav was pretty tough on my stronghold i mean i should have been able to hit it but i got stuck there for a while well uh i mean uh, unless either of y'all have anything specific to say uh, I think that's probably a good spot to to wrap it up uh, and while we get ready for the next match. Uh, also, everyone in chat, go uh, go send some support to both runners. They both did really well. They also both took time out of their day to do this. Uh, so yeah, go go uh, go show them some support and whatnot. Uh, drop some uh, follows, maybe subs if you have the if you have the prime available. Uh, and also check out uh, the uh, Urban Arts Partnership Group uh, if you're interested in that. So yeah, we're good to 